Hello everybody, thank you very much for this kind invitation. I'm really pleased to be able to give this short talk for you. What has made a lasting impression on me over the last few weeks are the words of a media artist friend of mine. I simply wanted to know what he is doing. And then I was extremely surprised that he was doing really well, that he probably coped with the whole situation better than I did. He said to me, you know, we artists have always been the precariat. We are not really worse off now than before. We are masters of improvisation. And creative rethinking is also not difficult for us. And as an intermedia artist, I was sitting in front of the computer at home most of the time. So also home office and quarantine don't bother me either. I was surprised and his words gave me hope. That something new would emerge from this disruptive moment that forces us all to rethink. Of course, the new does not necessarily have to be better, but the new offers new possibilities that we can use. And we should do that. Because one thing is clear, things could not go on as they were. And so COVID-19 was a stress test for so many areas and also accelerated many things. Digitalization in Germany has also received a major boost in any case because stores without online stores, schools and museums without digital offerings were suddenly gone. And gone from consciousness, detached from its visitors, condemned to its insignificance, that must not happen to museums, especially in such difficult times. Museums have to fight for their relevance, show that they are important third places, detached from everyday stress and the pressure of consumption, and that they, even if they work in the field of art history, act in the here and now. And for me, this means to understand digitalization not only as digital topics that are dealt with in exhibitions and events, but to live digitality. That means to transfer all the achievements of digital modernism to the art and culture business. Just like empowerment and participation. To understand your visitors as members of your community and to actively integrate them into the program. To form bonds, to turn visitors into citizen councils that decide on collections. To turn visitors into curators that decide on exhibition projects. And this is exactly what we are experimenting within our project nextmuseum.io. It's a platform for crowd creation and co-creation together with the Museum Ulm, supported by the Kulturstiftung des Bundes and Weisheim Foundation. Museums are increasingly characterized by a shared experience. They themselves become novel platforms, interactive places of communication, integration and knowledge transfer. Furthermore, they should make cultural participation possible for all groups of society. That is why we started with nextmuseum.io, a movement for more democracy in the art world. And we want to develop new formats and digital prototypes for education, mediation and communication with the visitor. We are testing new ways of creating exhibitions via swarm intelligence. And the results are then presented and debated in the participating museums. And we invite all interested institutions to use the platform to implement collaborative exhibitions and practices in their own houses. Or take the field of cultural education. We need more critical art education practices that are sometimes provocative, sometimes reflective, sometimes subversive. An important question here is who should actually teach whom? And how can we learn something that does not yet exist? Of course, more diversity and less Eurocentrism in the program is very important. In their own internal structures, but of course in museums also in the collection. Who is missing at the table? What is not to be seen in the collection and why? Can be guiding questions here. Finally, remote and agile work, less travel, more digital tools and less paperwork. These are also current achievements. And museums need to be closer, respond faster and be easy to reach. 
Long live direct communication. Social media, WhatsApp and Telegram also do this. But cancel culture on the other extreme is toxic. A digital mob that believes it is morally right and is screaming for vigilante justice. Which monument is still justified today? What about the aura of the digital? Who owns the digital commons? Societies negotiate permanently. Things are in flux. Through the digital as fast as never before. And negotiations are taking place on all channels. That can sometimes be very exhausting. But you have to anticipate these changes because never before these negotiations have been conducted with such passion, especially in the cultural field. Museums have to be careful that they don't become battlefields but spaces for constructive dialogue. And unfortunately in many museums still a taboo, entertainment and humor. Dear colleagues, do not take yourself too seriously. The visitor is not interested in 100 years of art history. He and she simply wants to spend a nice hour with you. We should talk about the customer journey in the museum. We should start using data we have from our visitors to make the program even better. German television 10 years ago was quite a catastrophe. Always the same ideas, formats, actors and suddenly streaming providers like Netflix came on the market. And today Netflix production win prizes in Cannes. And Netflix spent 17 billion dollars on in-house productions this year. The creatives and actors are happy, the production companies and the viewers are happy because above all the overall quality of the productions became much better. And that's exactly what I hope for the dinosaurs among the museums. That they don't die out because this would be fatal. But that the new Digital possibilities also give them new creative energy, new partners, that new hybrid formats emerge and that digitalization also enters the exhibition business. There are already historical reconstructions of Documenta 1 in virtual reality. There are great sculptures in augmented reality. There are artificial intelligence that create exhibitions and create artworks. There are bots as new audio guides, video workshops for children and guided tours on the desktop. But let's not forget the people in all these human-machine interactions. Museums are neither temples of consumption, nor of technology, nor of wellness. They are places to argue and polarize, to surprise and inspire and sometimes laugh. In digital as well as in the analog form. Thanks a lot. And I'm looking forward to your questions and the panel discussion. See you soon.